get my shoes on out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got two show to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful I've been in here and people are roaring with laughter, so... It's a dirty show, really. Well, it's clean dirt. Forgive me, but the best restaurants of the world are here in Vegas. <laughs> I mean, you have here the best Thank of the you. best. Yes. So we have many celebrities here. The Holly Madison come over here. And the Usher come over here many often. Sure. And the Paris Hilton come here. And Britney Spears came over here like uh, two weeks ago. Boy, I'm dating myself, but it's okay. <laughs> Nobody else will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Vegas. Welcome to That's So Vegas. I'm your host, Christine McKellar, and we're here live at the WCOBM studio right off of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sunset Road. You know, I've been joking the past couple weeks that I should be called Christine the Cannabis Queen <laughs> because I've had people on with cannabis products. One was a health water that I've been drinking and I really like. It's uh, nano-infused. They can customize the water to meet your particular health needs. And then I had the very charming and adorable Brenda Gonzalez of the first all-women only marijuana dispensary in Las Vegas which is ironically at 420 East Sahara and uh, guest with her was Jeffrey Axelrod who was the originator of promoting pot <laughs> in the 60s I say that because he did the tie-dye t-shirt so there you go, Christine the Cannabis Queen. And today I'm cranky Christine because <laughs> I have, unfortunately, one of my guests is sick and I think something's going around. I got the sniffles. So uh, what I thought we'd do today is cover some things that are coming up and some fun events that I've seen. We'll do that in this first segment. A couple other things I'd like to talk about that are directly uh, affecting Las Vegas. And the la don't go away, though, because the last two segments, Scotty, our fabulous uh, production engineer, is going to run two of my favorite um, segments from last year, and they're funny. One, of course, is the half-naked Aussie hunks. You don't want to miss that. And the other is the uh, really funny Craig Cantor and Brandon uh, Powers from... Uh, Oh, what is it? that Chinese place? <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Oh, gosh, and I've even been there. Oh, the Tiki. Uh, anyway, a uh, couple of interesting things, and I know everybody's seen this, and it's old news already the way the Internet is, is the couple that got busted for having sex on the high roller. That's really, of course, sex sells. I know that from my Boom Boom Chocolate um, show last week, which, thank you, viewers, got about... 4,000 views within 24 hours. I, yeah, sex does sell. Uh, so it was a little shocking, though, that this couple, and I feel bad for the young girl. Apparently, from what I understand, it was her 21st birthday. She came to Vegas and uh, just got too high and hooked up literally with a guy that I guess she just met. And then they got a little frisky, but unfortunately in front of people with their families and things of that nature. And... Uh, so I just, uh, I guess by the time you're 21, if you have no self-restraint and no self-respect, it just ain't going to happen. Kind of wondering, though, what her children and grandchildren are going to think of mommy, you know, when the five minutes of, or is it 15 seconds of fame wears off. Uh, I do wish, want to wish everybody a very happy Valentine's Day. That's coming up, and I wore my little pink and everything like that. And I'm not going to be cynical and say happy VD, <laughs> which is the way we singles deal with stuff. Stay with me. We are going to talk about what's coming up in Vegas. There are really some fun um, Valentine's specials at some popular properties. There have been a couple fun events that as media, you know, I've got the privilege to attend, and one of them was last night out at the Red Rock Libre Cantina. But um, today, too, maybe I'm a little cranky subliminally because today it was 35 years ago today that the Flamingo Hilton fire happened. And that was uh, 
a terrible tragedy. It was right on the heels of the MGM Grand Fire, uh, which I saw, that was, I believe, in November uh, 80, 81, and I actually saw the hotel burning from the suburban area. Uh, so the MGM, it was a horrific fire. I believe it killed uh, 87 people, most of them through smoke inhalation. The only positive thing that came out of that, if such a thing as a positive thing could be, is that uh, hotels nationwide and probably worldwide revamped a lot of their safety procedures, particularly hotels here in Las Vegas. And uh, I think it's safe to say that we do have uh, the safest hotels as far as fire and things of that nature and other procedures. You know, in the event, I believe, of an earthquake, which is rare, but they do happen in Nevada or any type of attack, I think our city's qualified um, to take care for us, fire department, police department, and that. But the um, uh, Las Vegas, uh, I mean, the Hilton, which is now Bally's, I did a little research on that because the arsonist, the MGM fire was uh, set by accident, they believe, in the deli, although... After the Hilton fire, there was speculation that the same guy was an arsonist. But get this. His name is Philip Klein. He's still alive. He's serving, uh, well-deserved, eight consecutive life sentences in um, the high desert prison outside of Indian Springs. But he was only 23 at the time. Apparently, he was a busboy. And uh, although hundreds were hurt the death toll wasn't as high but apparently he set the fire on purpose he was uh, speaking of cannabis but this is again back in the 80s uh 35 years ago to be precise uh, apparently he took a break and had a joint laced with cocaine and pcp that he was smoking on his break of all things and set the curtain on fire and then uh the story varies uh his story has varied over the years but it was a, a, a really bad tragedy. That fire killed 87 people. Uh, it was the worst, of, it's still the worst disaster in Nevada history. Third worst hotel fire in modern U.S. history. And, uh, but again, um, you know, they, things like that happen, I guess. And then that saves us in the future. So on a more positive note, uh, like I said, last night, Libre Cantina at the Red Rock Resort had their media night and it was great wine selection and I was fortunate enough to run into some foodie uh, writers that I like, Les Kincaid, his wife Tammy, Barbara Nosek of Celebrity Sh Chef Connection, Al Mancini was there with his mohawk, I just love him, he's a doll. Uh, they served a wonderful wine selection, their wine uh, cellars got to be fantastic. The Chardonnay they served us was a uh, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was up there, like with Stag's Leap or something like that. A nice California Chardonnay. Chef Brian Massey is the sh at the helm, and the sampling, we had a sample menu. Everything was divine. From the crispy shrimp tacos, and then a uh, really yummy chiliriano that he has, uh, he prepares with... The, uh, I want to say fried or roasted um, different varieties of peppers on it. It was really good. The salsa is good. That's how I always rate any kind of Mexican restaurant. Uh, and the ceviche was fresh. They had margaritas. What I like about it, it is out at the Red Rock, but it's conveniently located right off of the, I guess that would be the north uh, public parking area. So that was really good. Uh, the Sintas. I was hoping to have Frankie Sinta on my show today because originally they were having their opening night at Union Plaza. And again, it was a VIP media night scheduled for tonight, but he does have laryngitis and he's been pretty sick with that. Uh, he was sick uh, the week before, so hopefully they've moved the opening night uh, to next Wednesday. That again is not public. It's VIP and media and I'm sure Frankie will be feeling better by then. It could be this dry desert weather. We all know a lot of entertainers come here and the heat dries out their vocal cords and their sinuses. So although I was on a cruise ship doing, <laughs> I'm going to talk about myself here for a minute because I learned something really cool on a cruise ship when I was doing the lecture author circuit and it was in Australia. I totally lost my voice. And by that, I mean, I could not even squeak. And my friend who was traveling with me, Helen Margulis, can attest to that. Literally nothing would come out of my throat. And I had to do a lecture the next day. The head of entertainment, a lovely woman who is a former singer, uh, 
gave me what she would give to her entertainers, and it was a shot of really nice port and a little bit of brandy. And she said, oh, sip on this. You won't believe how you feel in like half an hour or so. And lo and behold, I sipped that little cocktail, and by that night, my voice was back. And I don't mean just a little back. It was all the way back. So I had to throw that out there. That's just a little tidbit. You never know what you're going to learn on my show. Uh, again, I highly recommend Libre out at the Red Rock. Uh Get well, Frankie. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. We're going to take a break here. Boy, that went fast. I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Red Roof Inn, across from the Hard Rock on Paradise. They have free Wi-Fi and continental breakfast for guests. They're close to the strip in the airport. Stay tuned. I've got some groovy stuff coming up. And don't forget the last two segments are going to be some of the best of last year. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Take care.